Hi, today we're going to see how to create an amazing event with a plugin WooCommerce Event Manager. Let's dig in. We can already notice that the WooCommerce Event Manager plugin is in the plugin directory of WordPress. Descriptions and everything is specified here. This is WooCommerce supported, which is a very good site. Those who use WooCommerce can smoothly create an event management website through synchronizing this plugin with WooCommerce. So, let's take a look at a demo. This is how we're going to create a site today. The shortcode is provided here and events are shown in the form of a grid through the shortcode. There are other styles as well and today we're going to look into every single detail. There is a section of their documentation that addresses installation, setup, how to create a new event, and everything that's relevant. So, let's begin. We already have freshly installed WordPress. Now we're going to install the plugin of WooCommerce Event Manager. We're going to click on Plugin and select Add New from the menu. This is where we're going to search for the WooCommerce Event Manager. We're going to notice that it's the first element from the search result. Now we're going to install it. Might take some time. Let's take a look at something else while the plugin gets installed. We have loads of stuff to show you today. The utility of this plugin is absolutely enormous. We're incredibly thrilled today to share them with you and we expect that you are going to be as excited as we are. We expect you to take as much value from this tutorial as possible. Wait, looks like the installation is already completed and now we're going to activate it. Let's see. The plugin is already activated but there is a warning we are being shown here and that is you must install WooCommerce plugin before activating WooCommerce Event Manager. Alright, what it says is, since the plugin is WooCommerce dependent, this message is telling us to install WooCommerce. WooCommerce is already installed, we only need to activate it. Alright, they have asked for some permissions here, let's click on allow. So as soon as the installation is completed, we are going to notice some changes in the menu. One of them is the addition of events which addresses all events, add new events, category, organizer, welcome, status, etc. Let's take a look at what's on the welcome page. We can see there are some extra add-ons and the list of add-ons is shown here. There's another page called status. Let's take a look at what's that about. We notice that everything is alright here except for two things. There are errors corresponding with email from name and email from address. We are going to deal with this through the page of WooCommerce event setting. The page has a segment called email settings. We are going to fill them up with necessary details and we should be good to go. Let's check status again. So we can see every element on the page is green which means everything is ok now. All right. Right now, we don't have any events. To create a new event, we can either click Add New Events from the top of the page or from the menu on the left hand side. We're going to create an event of reunion where everyone's going to register to book for their seats. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to fill the spaces for the title of the event and description of the event. We already have determined the title and description of the event, so we're going to paste them on the corresponding boxes. Now we can notice there is another menu as well that addresses event venue, location, ticket pricing, date and time, settings, rich text, frequently asked questions, FAQ, daywise details, and email text. On the right hand side, we can spot event category, event organizer, event feature image, template and event list thumbnail. We are going to look at all of them one by one. Alright, so far we have given a name to the event and provided a description to the event. Now we are going to categorize the event based on what type of event this is. Since it's a reunion, we are going to click on add new category, type reunion, and there we have it. The event is now categorized as such. Let's come to the event organizer now that addresses who are the organizers of the event. What we are going to do is we are going to click on add new organizer and input the name of the organizers of the event one by one. 
Now, we're going to event feature image. I believe we all are more or less familiar with the concept. What we are going to do is, we are going to select an image that represents the event we are creating. Alright, now we are done with providing relevant information. Now, we are going to take a look at venue or location. We can spot an option called location source. We have a choice to either manually input the event details here, or we can select a predetermined location of the organizers. To use organizer from this drop down menu, we will need to determine a location for the organizers. And for that, we'll need to click on organizer on the left hand side under events and fill up the boxes that correspond with the location. Now that we have filled them all up, the location we have just entered will now represent the location of the organizers, that is mage people in this case. Now, take a close look. When we select organizer from this drop down menu, we notice that the empty boxes that were there when event details were selected suddenly vanished. And that is because the system now already knows the address of the organizers since we have just inputted them for organizers under the segment of events. And as mentioned previously, if we want to manually input the address of the event, that's possible too. Now, there is a checkbox for show Google map that we'll need to click if we want the Google map to appear with the event. In this case, we want the map to appear with our event and so we tick off the box. Sounds good? Let's move on. Let's come to the segment of ticket and pricing. Before going after it, let's take a look at the types of tickets we are offering. We're noticing from the text pad that we had already planned that we are going to offer three types of tickets. Adult, child, couple and the prices are 500, 200 and 950 units of currency respectively. Now we are going to add them up. On the ticket, we are going to type adult. Under price, we are typing 500. And under available, we are going to set the highest number of adults who can participate in the event. Let's say it's 1000 in this case. There are a couple of more boxes where the date and time of when the sale of the tickets is going to end need to be specified. And under quantity box, which indicates which type of box you want the user to use while they are filling up the form from their end. In this case, we are going to select input box. Similarly, we are going to add other types of tickets as well. For the ticket type of child, we are inputting the type the price, availability of seats, and selecting input box. For the ticket type of couple, we're inputting the type, the price, availability of seats, and selecting input box. Done! There's another segment naming extra service area, and the space asks us to specify if we are going to provide any merchandise. In this case, you can see we already have decided that we are going to offer extra t-shirts and mugs at the event. Now, we are going to click on add extra price and type the name of the event which is t-shirt in this case. Specify the price of the item and also we are going to specify how many of them are available through inputting the corresponding boxes. Similarly, we are going to fill up the boxes for mugs as well. The next tab is date and time, which allows us to specify the day the event is planned to take place, the time the event is going to take place, and also when the event is planned to be concluded. You can see, we already have decided the event to take place on 10th December 2021 from 10 am to 4 pm. So we are going to select the date from the calendar under start date, inputting the exact time the event is going to begin. And also we are going to select the date the event is ending from the calendar under end date, which is in this case the same date. And we are inputting the exact time when the event is going to end. There is another tab of settings and as soon as we click on it, we can notice a box to specify the SKU number which would indicate if there is any special number or code that defines the event. Let's put REN-001. The next two options are there to specify if one can register or not, or whether one is shown the number of available seats. 
There is another option to particularize if the event is virtual or not. Now, we can spot another option, member only event, which if turned on, then only those who are the registered members of the site will be eligible to buy the tickets. From turning it on, we can notice multiple options from the drop down menu. One of them is for any logged in user. Now, if we had selected this option, this would only allow anyone logged in to buy the tickets for the event or notice it. If we had selected customer, this would only allow a logged in customer to be aware of the event. In this case, we're deciding not to turn it on because we want anyone to be the part of the event. Let's visit rich text. This is related to search engine optimization and Google Schema. Schema clarifies to the search engine what your page is all about. Later, search engines can interpret this information available on your web page so they can display relevant results to users based on search queries. For the time being, we are letting it be as it is. Then, frequently asked questions FAQ. The name basically speaks for itself. We can add frequently asked questions to our event by clicking on Add New FAQ, where title is designated for the question and content corresponds to the answer. We can add multiple FAQs if we want. Now, let's take a look at day-wise details, and this is where we can specify what is going to take place throughout the event. Clicking on Add New Days, we can see two boxes popping up to be filled up. For example, we can type that the event is planned to begin at 10 o'clock in the morning under title and describe what's planned to take place from then on in the box of content. Similarly, we can add more details for lunch hours and what's planned to take place from then on. And we can also add details regarding the closing of the event. Below this tab is email text. Once one has successfully completed the registration for the event, Here's where you input text for an email that will be sent to the participant as a token of appreciation or a welcoming email or any confidential information regarding the event that you deem necessary. Since it's HTML supported, we can use HTML tags if we want. We're done with inserting relevant information and now we're going to publish the event by clicking on the publish button on the right hand side. All right, the event is now published. Let's see how it looks. We can see that the mission is accomplished as the map, event photo, event date, and time along with location all are delightfully presented here with corresponding details. We can also notice the ticket types and while we experimentally play with the quantity of tickets, we can spot that the price calculations are done as well. Pleasing to the eyes, isn't it? Furthermore, we can see that the segment of FAQ is there as well along with the answers. Now we need to make sure that the event is shown on the home page in the form of a list. For this purpose, we have a short code called event list. Let's copy this particular text, click on edit page and paste the text over here. Click on update on the right hand side and voila! The event is now on the home page. This is how we can save time and easily create an event through the plugin. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've gained value from it. I'll be back pretty soon with another tutorial. So stay tuned.